So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reed O'Neill, and I was given the opportunity to be McNeil Cemetery Chair, and with this position is the MC of our annual event. I live down the road with my husband Rob and family on the Mather Farm. Not sure if it's ever going to be called the O'Neill Farm, but just the same, I am very proud that our, our, our family purchased the Mather Farm over 30 years ago. I never get tired of hearing the stories that happened on the farm. Our family go by the cemetery multiple times every day on our tractors, our wagons, our trucks, our cars, our bicycles, and walking. I believe it is the best kept and the most beautiful cemetery everywhere, anywhere. It shows to others that we care we care about our community and who came before us. I hope it never changes. This is the 70th uh, McNeil Cemetery Annual Remembrance Service. The first one began in 1949. That is tradition. McNeil Cemetery, the Priceville Public Cemetery Company, was, was the joining of the pioneer in the McNeil Cemetery many years ago. So just a few announcements. There's an accessible uh, wash, uh, portable washroom to the south of the shed. Please take a moment to see our beautiful columbarium. Uh, the etching and the side panels reflect our history and the wonderful area we live. The cemetery board and the community continue to be very proud of it. If I could bring, bring your attention to the Vimy oak tree over on the top of the tr hill over there, inspired by the heroic victory of the Canadian forces at Vimy Ridge. This year again, you will see our veteran graves marked with Canadian flags. We can never forget. Mark is working on the Pioneer History uh, Project, and she has some questionnaires and uh, questionnaires there at the front here, and you can get them after. And uh, another benefit of being on the mailing list, you will receive our newsletter. We do have an, a few extra copies here for you as well. She is looking for items for our newsletter and suggestions for future speakers. We truly do want to hear from you so you can hear from us. I'm sure you've already noticed the facelift on our shed. Many thanks to Doug Harrison, Wayne Kinsman, and many others. Uh, Wayne is our newest member of the board for their workmanship, workmanship on this project. It certainly looks very nice. They wanted you to know that the pump is also working. <laughs> and don't drink the water, Ken, <laughs> Ken Harrison. It always amazes me of the excellent turnout uh, for this event. We can all thank Mark Doig for her energy and her commitment to the McNeil Cemetery annual event. She does all the work and makes us all look good. So following today's remembrance service, please don't rush off as I am sure there's someone here looking for you. I would hate for you to miss an opportunity to reconnect. Maybe exchange your email, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Snapchat, or any kind of social media. And I, I do still believe the uh, best is face-to-face, -face, so don't rush off. You might even get a hug. <laughs> As we begin today's anniversary remembrance service, the cemetery board would like to extend its deepest appreciation to thanks to Ken Harrison, Linda Darrow, Linda Burnett for their music, bagpiper Bill McMeekin, and Kim Higginson's for his words. We would also like to give a huge thanks to Doug Harrison for the year-long commitment to the maintenance of our cemetery. So uh, please stand if you are able and join us in singing the national anthem O Canada. Our home and native land True patriot love
cross the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of our sinners who was slain. So I'll carry the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. minutes to remember those who had been interred this past year. Ronald Watson, Isabel Shore, Agnes McEachern, Eleanor Kearns, Ruth Brown, Kenneth Muir, Leonard Smith, Annette Andersma, Calvin Hutchinson. Let's observe one minute of silence in honor of them, as well as all those who have gone before us, especially those who lay peacefully at rest here at the Pioneer and McNeil cemeteries. Ken, turn it over to you. Thank you, Rita. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, a couple of people that came a fair distance from... Uh, Prescott Valley, Arizona. Now they're related to the MacArthur's, the Eckert's, the Beatons, and the Patterson's. Gloria and Dave Roat, would you please stand up? There they are. I met them yesterday and uh, you want to talk history? Talk to Gloria. We found out we're all related. <laughs> yeah, and uh, very interesting, so. Okay, girls. Decoward. Fallen leaves that lie scattered on the ground. The birds and flowers that were here now can't be found. All my friends that I once had are not around. They're all scattered like the leaves upon the ground. Some folks drift along through life and never thrill to a feeling that a good deed brings until 
it's too late and they are ready to lie down they're beating the leaves and scattered on the ground to your grave there's no use taking any gold you cannot use it when it's time for hands to fold Oh, when you leave this earth for a better home someday The only thing you'll take is what you gave away Lord, let my eyes see every need of every man This was one of my mom's favorite hymns, and uh, it got me singing it. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made.
great power. Thank you. I'd also like to thank my accompanies today, Linda Burnett and Linda Dara. I have another, uh, one more hymn. Uh, this one, uh, Katie informed me that this was Jack McMillan's favorite song. One of the, one of the favorite songs. <laughs> In A chord. Here the labor is so hard And the workers they are tired And our weary hearts are yearning for rest Kim Higginson, our guest speaker this afternoon. Kim has been coming to Priceville since 1950, traveling up from the city to visit his grandparents and many relatives. He and his wife, Martha, continue, or currently live just a short drive northwest of Priceville in a former township of Glenelg. They have lived here for 18 years and considers themselves fortunate to now call this area home. Kim has many family members buried here at McNeil and as a plot holder, we'll be sharing a personal reflection today. Kim? Good afternoon, everyone. Every year on the Sunday of the August Civic Holiday Weekend, we gather here at McNeil Cemetery. We come as friends, family, and as a community. We are here for a very important reason, to be with those who have gone before us. And by being here, we give thanks and honor them for the role they played in our lives. And I'm grateful to have a small part in our remembrance today. My grandma, Caroline Cutter, and my granddad, Alfred O'Dell, are buried over there near the north fence. My father, John Higginson, and my mother, Doris O'Dell, are resting over there to my left. And my wife, Martha, and I have a deed for lots 8 and 9, 68 square feet of prime McNeil real estate right next to my parents. I also have aunts, uncles, cousins resting here at McNeil. I have a Priceville story to share with you this afternoon. Stories can be happy, epic, sometimes sad, even tragic. Stories are gifts from past generations to future generations. They tell us about our heritage and, re and reveal who we are and where we come from. And I am guessing that by the many monuments and headstones in this cemetery, there have been millions of tales, anecdotes, sagas, fables, yarns, and narratives that have been passed down. They have formed our family histories and helped weave the fabric that makes the Priestful community a very special place. is simple and heartwarming. It was told to me by my mother many years ago, and while it is a personal account, it is the story of so many who live and are connected to Priceville. 
My mother's story takes place in 1936, and it is about her father, my granddad, and the Saugeen River. In a few minutes, I will take you back in time to meet my granddad and my mom. But I first must begin by talking about the Saugeen River and its significance. The Saugeen has been the beating heart that has pumped life and prosperity into our community. The Saugeen's watershed, made up of its many creeks, streams, and tributaries, was a key reason settlers were drawn, drawn to the area in the mid-1800s. Villages were established along the Saugeen for a variety of reasons. It attracted wildlife, and the fish were a plentiful source of food. It was an important barge route that transported goods. It was used to float timber and logs. It was a source of power to run the mills, just to name a few. It was the lifeblood that sustained early settlers, broad growth, fortune, adventure, and in later times, recreation. It is Priceville's faithful friend, and I would like to spend a few minutes and take you on the journey of the Saugeen River. The word Saugeen is an indigenous word from the Ojibwe First Nations, meaning outlet. The source of the Saugeen River is located south of the village of Maxwell in the Dundalk Highlands. The water bubbles up from underground springs located in the Osprey wetlands. From the reeds, it proceeds and begins its journey towards Lake Huron. The water gushes westward, collecting the runoff from streams, brooks, creeks, and ditches. It meanders through the municipality of Grey Highlands and ambles and rambles through the township of Southgate. The river's wide sweeping turns whirl and curl towards Priceville. It circles and hugs the village. From Priceville, the water continues to pour westward and tosses and crosses, twists and turns. Arriving in the Durham Conservation Area, it encounters children wearing swimsuits and goggles. The inviting water of the Saugeen plays and sprays, teases and pleases. But the river can't stay and play, frolic and rollick with the children for very long. It has to keep moving. At McGowan Falls, the water drops and cascades. The caverns and rocks cause the torrent to splash and flash, gush and flush, swell and sweep, shake and quake as the River Saugeen continues its path westward. Midway between the towns of Durham and Hanover, the Saugeen meets one of its tributaries, the Rocky, and together these combined waters hurry and scurry, rumble and tumble to, ha to Hanover, where the waters glitter, glitter and glisten, glimmer and gleam. Just west of Hanover, the South Saugeen, the second major tributary, wades as it pours into the main artery of the river. It is here, as it arrives in Bruce County, that a magnificent canoe route begins. The now deeper and wider river whitens and brightens, quivers and shivers. It reaches Walkerton, where it surges northward. The water foams and roams through meadows and glades, plunges and lunges through sun and shade. It flows and goes, drops and hops, as it passes fields of canola, corn and winter wheat. Its waters rise and leap, sink and creep past hay, pa past hay pastures and grazing cattle. In the village of Paisley, the Saugeen greets its last two major tributaries, the Teeswater and the North Saugeen. And the waters glance, prance, dance, and advance towards the final destination. There is one last hurdle, Denny's Dam. But it proves to be no obstacle for the gleaming, beaming, streaming waters of the Saugeen. The river finally empties into the lake at the town of Southampton, where the Saugeen's journey comes to an end after its 160 kilometer passage. That is the river my mother was watching some 82 years ago.
And now I'm going to take you back to 1936 to visit my, grandfa my grandparents' farm on the south line where the Sabine River runs along the eastern edge of the property. This is not a hobby farm. They don't grow gourmet mushrooms. They don't grow organic kale. And they don't grow heirloom beets. They don't raise alpacas, lambs, or miniature horses. There is no pot-bellied pig named Oliver. There are no granite countertops in the kitchen, nor a double sink vanity in the bathroom. In fact, there is no indoor bathroom, and there is no hydro. My grandparents' home was one of thousands of working family farms in rural Ontario during the middle of the greatest economic depression known to humankind. Money was scarce, and prices for farm products couldn't have been lower. Farming in the 1930s was not for the faint of heart. A working farm was a homestead. It was a business operation, a tradesman's workshop, as well as a grain and livestock processing plant. A husband and wife team required a complete package of do-it-yourself skills, plus a strong back and unbreakable work ethic to farm the land, raise a family, and hopefully earn a little income. My mother's story begins in the late afternoon on a hot summer's day. My mom, Doris, is 17 years old and is standing in the yard watching her father, my granddad, walk down a large sloping pasture leading to the Saugeen River. She is thinking granddad is going to check on the family of geese that lived on the river and the surrounding flats and who, in just a few short months, would grace the Christmas dinner table. She is curious as she watches her father get closer and closer to the water's edge. My mum recounted that this day began like most days on the Odell farm. My granddad was a human alarm clock and would wake up each morning at the crack of dawn. He was always the first to rise. My granddad was noisy. He didn't tiptoe and pussyfoot around so others could sleep in. Sleeping in was for the privileged. On a working farm, there are chores waiting. My granddad would head down to the kitchen. The family would lay awake in their beds and listen to the banging of the cupboard doors, the slamming of the drawers, and the rattling of cutlery. And why was there commotion and ruckus in the kitchen? He was making the love of his life, my grandma, a pot of tea. He would place all tenderly on a tray, on a tray and with a slight smile would take it upstairs so Grandma could be begin her day in a gentle fashion. She would later be seen firing up the cook stove. It would get hotter in the house than outside. But meat, fruit, and vegetables had to be canned, pickled, and preserved for the coming winter months. As the day got underway, Granddad and my uncles would head to the barn to begin the day's choring. The hungry pigs would snort and grunt, shove and push, as a rough grind of oats and barley and a slop bucket of swill consisting of skim milk and edible kitchen waste was poured into their trough. Fresh eggs would be gathered in handfuls of whole grain oats scattered for the fussing and clucking chickens. The cows would grind and swallow the grain from the feed boxes as the hand milking began. Squirts of milk would ring, ping, and tinkle the bottom of the metal pail. If a nosy barn cat meowed, meowed and got too close, it could expect a shot of milk right in the face. Soiled straw and offal from the stalls and pens would be shoveled and forked into the wheelbarrow and pushed and dumped onto the manure pile outside the barn. Barn chores done, Granddad and my uncles would then tend the fields. The horses, named Polly and Queen, would be harnessed and hitched to the mower or rake. The team worked hard and gave real meaning to the term horsepower, 
while granddad and my uncles gave real meaning to the term manpower. The large vegetable garden next to the house was, was granddad's to carefully manage and cultivate. He would row, he would hoe rows of peas, beans, turnips, carrots, onions, lettuce, and radishes. He would mound the dirt around the potatoes and restake and tie the tomatoes. He would weed, snip, water, edge the perimeter, and fuss with the clothes on the scarecrow. And it was on this late summer's afternoon day in 1936, after a long day of farming, my mother witnessed my granddad walk past the geese grazing on the flats and wade into the soggy river. Granddad knew a place where the crystal clear water was shallow and ran fast. He laid down on his back and outstretched his arms and legs and let the cool, pure, rushing waters bubble and swirl, churn and turn around him. The waters of the river Saugeen would soothe his aching body and refresh and revive his tired soul. My granddad would go to bed early that night, like he did most nights, before the sun had set. The next day, Granddad would rise at the crack of dawn and make a pot of tea for the love of his life and begin another day doing what he cherished most, working the Odell farm on the south line. It was this image of my Granddad cooling off in the Saugeen River in the late afternoon on a long, hot summer's day that would stay with my mother all her life. And today, when I see the Saugeen River, I often think of my granddad and my mom. My mom told this story to me, and now I have passed it along to you. I would like to close with a prayer. It speaks to the long days and hard work that every generation before us has endured to build and nurture this community. Our prayer is in honor of all those who rest in this little piece of heaven on earth known as McNeil Cemetery. On this beautiful Sunday afternoon, let our prayer be for the continued tranquility of the McNeil and Pioneer Cemeteries. Today, let us give thanks for the, for the crystal clear rushing waters of the Saugeen River and for our Priceville heritage that past generations have entrusted to us. And finally, let our prayer be for all our friends and family who are resting here. We pray they are at peace and reunited with others. Let our hearts be filled with thankfulness as we honor them today. Let us remember their smiles, their voices, and the sound of their laughter. Let us remember the special moments and the stories they shared with us. Amen. So at this time, we'll have a free will offering. And Bill McMeekin, are you uh, ready for Amazing Grace? So Bill McMeekin will be playing Amazing Grace during a free will offering. I will ask the members of the board to take up the free will offering and proceed, uh, proce proceeds which will go towards the care and operation of the Pioneer and McNeil Cemeteries. So I call, call on B. Wilton, Doug Harrison, Leonard O'Dell, Janet Carson, Tina Watson.
Thank you very much, Bill. Next on the program is a hymn. Please stand if you're able, or you can sit down. Uh, Mansion Over the Hilltop. We're on, yep. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below A little silver and a little gold But in that city where the ransoms will shine our annual remembered service to a close. Thank you for all attending and we hope to see you all next year. We can all sing the last uh, song, I'll Fly Away. It's your insert in your book.
Thank you, folks.